there is going to be a great feast in heaven one day. The question that all of us must answer is, will we be in attendance? Will you be in attendance for this great feast? If you aren't in attendance for this great feast, I tell you, it will be nobody's fault but your own. As we will see here in our Sunday School lesson this week, God, he has sent out an invitation, not to some people, he has sent out an invitation to all people to come to the dinner that he has made for us. So will you go to that dinner? Will you be in attendance again for that great feast that will be in heaven one day? Our lesson opens with Jesus prepared to teach a parable, but before he gets into the parable, he calls out, we will notice there in seven through the ninth verse, he calls out those in attendance to the way that they came in and the way that they sat down for supper. As shown in the opening verses of our lesson for today, Jesus, he had been invited to eat supper in the home of one of the rulers of the Pharisees on the Sabbath. Now this is interesting because we know how the Pharisees thought of Jesus. And this scripture, I want you to see, it makes it very clear that they were going to watch Jesus closely. So we can think of this supper being another opportunity for the religious leaders to put Jesus to a test. Now the thing that the Pharisees didn't expect was for Jesus to immediately call them out. Jesus, he essentially asked them, when you are invited to a wedding, to a wedding feast specifically, where do you go and sit at the feast? He said to them that they certainly shouldn't go and sit at the best place because they may end up looking foolish if they're in a chair for someone else. I mean, let's think about that for a moment, right? When we go to a friend's house or when we go to some family's house, do we go and do we sit in their chair? You know, all of us, we have our own chairs. You know, I would want somebody to come into my house and I would want them to sit in my lazy boy in my recliner. I would look at them like they're crazy. I would look at them like they think that they own the place. So we are very careful when we go to family's house, when we go to friend's house, not to sit in their chair. So we'll see Jesus said to them that when they are invited to a feast, to go and sit in the lower place and wait. Wait for the one who invited them to give them a place to sit. Jesus, he was telling these men that they need to learn how to be humble. So imagine that thinking that you have a trap set for Jesus and Jesus, he comes in and he completely destroys the trap. There was silence that fell over that room. There was silence that fell over that room after Jesus had called these men out on, on where they were sitting at for the supper. Now to break that silence, one of those that was at the table said, blessed, he said, blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Now this man said this without any clue as to what it was that he was saying, what he was talking about. We know this because he doesn't expound on his thought. He was just saying something to say it. Jesus, without missing a beat, he went into a parable speaking of a certain man having a great supper and inviting many to the supper. Jesus, he tells us that at supper time, the certain man, he sent out his servant to those who were invited. You see, it was time for them to come to supper. And the one that went out said, hey, it's dinner time. As with most of the parables that Jesus taught, we see the father, the son, and mankind being represented in this parable. We see the father represented by the certain man, the master of the house. We see the son that is Christ being represented by the servant. All of those who the invitation was sent out to are representative of mankind. The initial invite was sent out to Israel, the Jews. So we see where again here in this parable where the father, he has sent out an invite to the dinner, the supper that will take place in heaven. He has sent it out to mankind. Now look at how the people responded to being told it's supper time. You would have thought that the people would have gone rushing for free food. That's what we do today, right? If it's free food, you better believe we'll be there. But these people, they chose, they made excuses. One wanted to tend to the land that they just had bought. 
another one to tend to the cattle that they just had bought instead of eating the free food. Another made an excuse about just getting married and not being able to come to the feast. The people, they were turning down the invite from this certain man to go to his dinner. And the reason why they were turning it down because in their minds, they had something far more important to do than to go to this man's dinner. What we see here in this parable, it is very indicative of what happens in the world today. God, he's been calling out to the world. He's been calling out to mankind. He's been sending out an invite to the world to come to him, to come to his dinner. But all of us who are other world, most of us, I should say, who are other world, we feel we have something more important than the Lord. Where God should actually come first in our life, he is not the top priority in the lives of many who are in our world today. So with that in mind, how do you think that that make God feel? He sends out an invite. He has sent out an invite repeatedly to mankind and we continue to reject it because to us, God, he isn't important. To us, God doesn't come first in our life. Our business comes first in our life. So how do you think that make God feel? So when the servant came and told the certain man how the people had responded, we'll see there in the 21st verse that the certain man became angry and he sent his servant out again. But this time he sent him into the streets, into the city to invite, we'll see there, more people. Through scripture, we know that the Lord, he first sent the invitation to the children of Israel through the prophets. But many of the people, they chose to reject God's covenant. They chose to reject the law from the Lord. They chose to live wickedly. And in that choice, when they chose to live wickedly, we know that the Lord still loved the world and that he gave the world his only begotten son, who initially came again to the Jews with this invitation from the Lord to join him. Some at that point in time, they did join. They listened to Christ and they chose to follow him. But at the same time, we must understand there were many that still chose to reject, that still chose to refuse the invite that came from the Lord. Now, this time when the servant came back to the certain man and said, it is done, he told the certain man, hey, there's still room in the supper hall. So the certain man again sent the servant into the highways this time, to the hedges, to compel more to come to his house for supper. This was an invitation for the rest of the world, not just Israel, not just the Jews. This was an invitation for the rest of the world to join the Lord. So will you join the Lord for supper? Will you be in heaven for God's feast? Again, as I said at the start of this lesson, it will be on you. It is on all of us individually to accept the invite to again join the Lord for supper. This invite, again, it has been one that has been ministered to us by Christ through the ministering of the apostles, through the ministering of the Holy Spirit, through the ministering of the Word of God. The Word of God, it is an invitation. It is an invite for us to join the Lord. We must repent of our sins, of our wicked ways, and we must turn to the Lord. And when we do so, as God has promised us, we will have everlasting life. And this everlasting life in heaven it is going to be filled with great joy where we will all rejoice over supper with the Lord. Will you be there? My hope today is that yes, you will have received that invite. You will have listened to the word of God and you will join the Lord for supper.